Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how to use the database functions. For example, dsum, dAverage, dCount, when you're working with an Excel table, working with an Excel list. So you don't have to be working with a complex database. If you're working with an Excel table or list, you'll want to be able to learn how to use database functions. dsum, dCount A, dAverage, dCount. Now, if you are using a data list, you are probably also using filtering, either the auto filters or, in my previous lesson, I showed you how to use the advanced filters which use a criteria range. So up here I have a criteria range and I have a data set and I have filters in place. So let me give you an example. Manager comes to me and says, Danny, quickly, I need to get the total amount of invoices for the ABC conglomerate. Well, the first thing you're probably thinking is I'll apply a filter. I'll come in here into the customer field, use my drop-down auto filter, select ABC conglomerate, and there you go. But oh, the manager wanted the total. Here I have all the detail. I'm gonna how am I gonna do that? Learn to use the DSUN function and you'll have the answer. So let me show you over here. I'm gonna remove this criteria, move this filter, and I'm gonna show you how to use the DSUM function to get the answer that the manager was looking for. Equals DSUM and let's use the control a keyboard shortcut for the function arguments dialog box each of the database functions uses the same three arguments so if you learn how to desum, you'll learn how to do d average at the same time all right first is the database i strongly recommend that you use name ranges so over here i use the keyboard shortcut f3 to bring up a list of my name ranges the name range invoice starts over here in cell a8 so when you're creating a name range for your database functions include the label Next, what field do I want to calculate? I'm going to be calculating the invoice amount. That's what the manager wanted. Now, there are three ways to indicate the field. I'll show you what I prefer is the easiest, which is to click on the label for the field. So over here, I'm going to click on that cell D8. Next, where is the criteria? When you are doing database functions, similar to what you learned how to do when you are using the advanced filter, is create a criteria range. So when I'm selecting the criteria, make sure that you select the label as well as the value or the values of the formula that you're going to use in your criteria. And now let's click OK and there you go. And now let's change this over to currency zero decimal places and I have the answer for the customer uh, my manager 154,000 is the total of the invoices for the ABC conglomerate all right what if later on in the day he comes back and says well that's great Danny but really what I want to see is I don't want to see all of the invoices only the top invoices in other words the invoices that are greater than 3,000 let's again let's go back and recreate this equals D sum Control A. Of course, you know I'm going to be using the name range invoices. I use the F3 keyboard shortcut. The field that I'm going to be selecting. Remember the first time I went through and I selected the label over there by clicking on the cell? The second way we can do that is give the column reference. So the invoice amount is the fourth column counting from the left. Invoice date is the first. Invoice is the second. Customer is the third. Invoice amount is the fourth. So the field, the field is what we're going to be calculating. So the number four. Now criteria, this time we're going to expand our criteria where the customer is equal to the ABC conglomerate as we just did, but the invoice amount is over than over the greater than 3,000. Now remember when we're creating criteria where we want both conditions to be met, we put both values for the conditions on the same row. So both conditions must be met. That's what the manager is looking for. And there's the answer. Again, you can see the beauty of this. What if later on in the day, the manager came back and said, well, can you do the same report, but this time for Big Valley Computing? Control C, and let's substitute it. Well, there you go. Here's the total for Big Valley Computing. It's really very simple. So we take the beauty of what we have with either a simple filter, but we don't get the total amount. We don't get the average. We don't get the high value. We take what we've learned about how to create complex or compound uh, criteria over here and then we total it off with learning how to use a database function.
Now, again, you can see the value over here. So the criteria that I put in this example, I use the criteria to be only the invoice amount over than, over than 3,000. So I didn't want to have a single customer in there. I wanted to see for all customers in there. Now, this also gives me an opportunity to highlight the third way that we can indicate the field. Remember, the first way I did it was by pointing at the cell that had the label that I wanted to calculate. The second way was to put in the column reference one two three four was the invoice amount the third way to do that is inside double quotation marks type the label now that's a bit more awkward and so I prefer either or the other the column reference one two three four in this case or click on the cell that has the label and again with your criteria make sure that you include the label as well as any of the values any of the formulas in the rows that make up your criteria so you can see how we can use this we could use the count the invoices over three thousand dollars I use the decount function the same three arguments unpaid invoices again really very very simple what I used is the criteria was status equals unpaid so it's a great way that you can can take advantage of what you've learned with filtering whether it's simple filtering or whether it's advanced filtering you do want to create a criteria range so let me give you another example over here I have the ABC corporation I have a data set I've created the criteria range over here and my best practice when I'm creating the criteria is to use a cell link so that the label for the criteria matches the label for the data set and then over here will be the output so over here I want to be able to do a calculation using the north as the criteria I want to get an output for a total of the units first thing I want to do is I want to create a name range now begin with the labels and I use control shift down arrow to get down to the last record control shift right arrow now I have all of the records in the labels selected and come up here into the name box ABC grocery Remember, all names in Excel must begin with a letter, no spaces. All right, now I'm ready to do a sum of the units for the North Division. Equals D sum. And the new range that I'm using is the ABC grocery. And the field that I want to total, units are the third column over. So I'll put in three and then the criteria that I want to evaluate. What I'm going to do over here is I'm going to select all the labels and the row. Now later on I'm going to add in a compound criteria. So I want to select this but I want to make sure that I make this absolute because I'm going to copy this over. So I'm going to do the F4 keyboard shortcut and now that range for the criteria is selected. So now I have a total of the units. Now the beauty of using that absolute cell reference is that if I copy this over here for the sales, all I have to do is make one change. The field number in this case is not the third field, one, two, three, but when I want a total sales, that's the fourth. So I change that to four and now I have my answer. And again, if I wanted to go through and change this from north to south, control C control V and I wanted to add in compound criteria to add in south and produce you see now I have multiple conditions in there because I selected all of the labels it made it really very simple to have that update so again let's take a look over here 47,000 is south what if I made it west you see how that changes see how it updates and instead of produce what if I put in uh, meats there you go. So learning how to apply database functions, dsum, dcount, dAverage, they're simple to use. Each one requires three arguments. The name of the database, use a name range for your database. You have three ways to indicate the field that you wish to calculate. Click on it, type the number counting left to right of the field, or include the label name inside double quotation marks. Click OK, and there you go. So there you picked up a great tip on how you can combine data list, filtering, and database functions. And I'll see you in the next lesson.